All right, we're back here at Superstition Mountain, Henry Fall, Milo Lines. We are going to do an analysis on Daniel Berger's swing. Some things we see in his motion. It's a unique move. And why did we pick Daniel Berger? Well, he just won, of course. He did? Oh yeah, he won at Pebble, sweet. Let's take a look at Daniel Berger's golf swing. So here we have Daniel Berger's golf swing. First thing I want you to notice is the strength of his left hand grip. It's a four knuckle grip. It looks pretty conventional pivot wise as he takes it to the top. He's got the right tilts and turns. Everything looks really pretty much mint. As he comes down, you know, this is pretty awesome motion. With that grip, he matches it up really good. Returns it just where it started. Pretty awesome move. Very nice looking from that vantage point. Now, from down the line, you can see it looks really conventional as he starts to club back. But from the halfway back point to the top of his backswing, he begins to supinate his trail forearm, which normally happens in the downswing, but he's got it preset. So now with his awesome pivot, he's able to deliver that club to the ball really stably. Okay, now that we've looked at Daniel's swing, you can see there's some really interesting things going on there. Now what I want to show you is how those things all match up and work. So Henry's going to pretend he's Daniel for a minute. It's going to be tough, because he doesn't move like Henry. But some of the things he does we can, we can all emulate. So first thing I want to point out is Daniel Berger, gets the, he gets the club face in a really good spot. His his, the early part of his backswing is pretty much mint, right? It looks just like I would draw it up. So from address to first parallel here, it looks just like this. The club's right in his hands. It's beautiful. And then from there on, what does this club do? Well, he gets it, his lead hand pretty laid off here. He gets the club pretty far behind him. And his hand's way high, and this is really supinated. So his, his trail wrist is really rotated this way. Okay, now what do we all know about the golf swing? That needs to supinate at some point in the swing, right? Daniel just does it in the backswing. So he doesn't do it like my normal would be, go to, go to a normal top of backswing position, Henry. So we're pretty much everything in line. Now go ahead and start down and have this little supination move where the club shallows out and gets where we want it. Well, so now you've got it in, in that shallow position. Now swing that up to the top. Does that feel kind of like what Berger's done? Not quite. This is even more, I would well, say. Yeah. Shallow it like crazy. So start at, yeah. the, at the top and, sh and give me yeah. a real shallow move. There you go. So you're really shallow. That's what Berger's got at the top. Yeah. So he's basically pre-set set the shallowing move. He's created, he's, he's got the, all the supination and wrist conditions all preset. So as he's got this laid off high hand position at the top, his right forearm is pre-supinated. Very extended trail wrist. Yep. From here, you're saying it's a pivot and the arms just work kind of down. Yep, they reconnect to him. And, yep. and then from here, it's like any other pro you would see. Now, most of us, if we did that, what would happen? If we tried to preset everything? If we had everything preset, <laughs> we'd probably pull down and get steep. We'd get steep, but Daniel doesn't. Right. So when he changes directions, what happens to that shaft? He, it, it, what I noticed in his swing is it, I felt like his arms almost just kind of rode down. His arms ride down, his body opens up great, he's got an awesome pivot. And the club doesn't actually steepen, it stays the same. So yep. it stays about how, how laid off it is all the way down. Yep. And he just turns the corner with it with a really passive stable face and strikes the ball really good. One thing I loved when I was watching him this past weekend was his patience from the top too. Yeah. Once he set it, and he had that little movement down, he just absolutely could go after it. Yeah, and his motion's not gonna be the most dynamic way to do it because it's not happening in transition. It's all preset, Yeah. but it's pretty good. Pretty good for him, he hits it real straight. Yeah, I mean, it definitely showed up on 18 when he oh, needed yeah. it, so. Awesome. So, is Daniel Berger's a golf swing we wanna copy? Probably not, but there are things about his golf swing 
that I think everybody can copy. Well, it's like DJ when he was growing up. Why would you change his swing? A lot of people may have, right? Yeah. But thankfully, no one did. Burger being in the same boat, right? For sure. That unique move, but they get it in that great spot, and from here to here, it's magic. So if we're going to copy anything Daniel Berger does, we're going to copy his pivot. He has got an awesome pivot, and from waist high to waist high in the golf swing, he's about as good as it gets. So I would say that's what you want to look at. Don't copy his wrist conditions at the top. He does some interesting things, kind of like Dustin Johnson does. It's a little different, but some interesting things. Yep. Copy the pivot. It's magic. Well, I hope you all liked this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in learning more about your game and how you can get better, come check out MiloLinesGolf.com. It's our academy where we'll be able to help you one-on-one -on -one to get better at this game. God, these poor girls. <sighs> all right, we're done.